here in Nairobi with Eric Herzman, who is the founder of the iHub and co-founder of Oshahidi, and also the famous ICT blogger, White African. Eric, we're here, we're going to talk about ICT for D. What's, what's the definition of ICT for D? Well, yeah, so um, ICT for D is kind of a loaded phrase, right? And it stands for ICT for development. And as I understand the definition, it is uh, when you apply ICTs to further the development of the country. Uh, but the biggest issue with that is that it's traditionally only applied to places like Africa and Asia, sometimes South America. But when the same stuff gets done in the U.S. In the US or, or Europe, it, um, it isn't called ICT for D anymore. It's called, you know, um, disruptive innovation and yeah. things like that. And it doesn't, it's not applied the same way. So a poor community in the U.S., in the Appalachian Mountains, or, uh, you know, in, in some, you know, far off corner of Europe mm. has real issues, a lot of poverty. Yeah, there are many some, of the same issues. Yeah, many of the same issues. Yeah. And, you know, you get, you, you have somebody who does, does an ICT project there, it's not ICT for D. It's, it's either it's either the government doing their job, or it's um, private enterprise figuring out a way to mm. use ICTs to do something disruptive and, and, and interesting and innovative. Mm. But here, the same project here is ICT for D. It's all grant based funding. It's really an extension of that kind of humanitarian aid space yeah. uh, that we've had here for decades. And for me, what it, it goes back to is you know I started doing what I'm doing balancing it twelve years ago. And at that point, everybody was talking about the internet. And so you would see a lot of North Americans over here talking about the internet. The internet would be the thing that would solve particular problems. There was no bandwidth to speak of. And, but this was going to be something that solved problems. I remember Andrew McLaughlin, who at that stage was working with Google, looking at Africa, and is now head of Tumblr, saying, you know, it's like magic dust. They think you can kind of sprinkle it on and suddenly, magically, something different will occur. That's absolutely right. And you see the subsets of that today, which is M4D, you know, mobile yeah. development and things like that. Yeah. And so, yeah, you, you can just throw it out there and it'll magically work. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a real challenge. And I think there's a couple problems with it. One, the first one is just, it's condescending. Yes. In that, you know, we treat Africa and Asia different because uh, we have the money and you don't, and we can call it yeah. and, and, and the labeling, the semantics, it sounds like a small thing, but it's actually a big thing. Yeah. Because it sets up this power, uh, this power um, relationship, relationship that, that isn't necessarily true, but is perceived as true because of the, because of the terminology. Right? Yeah. So terminology is actually very important. Uh, so one of my biggest problems with it is actually that we have people coming and doing ICT for new projects, and a couple things happen. Number one, they sometimes undermine real commercial enterprises mm. that might be trying to do the same type of thing. Uh, and, and that takes away either job opportunities yeah. or business opportunities for entrepreneurs that would be there otherwise. <coughs> in some countries, straightforwardly, the, the application of grants to this activity means that that's where all the entrepreneurial energy is focused. Right. So if there's free money, yeah. if you have a choice between free money and, and, and difficult money, and difficult money yeah. whether it's equity-based or whether yeah. it's debt-based, yeah. you're going to go for the free money anyway. I, I, I guess, right? I mean, that's how we built the GD. Yeah. Um, so you go for that because it makes sense, business yeah. sense. But it's not always the best thing. Sometimes it sets the wrong incentives for yeah. the whole market. So that's a challenge. The other challenge is this. I actually think it undermines the the government's responsibility to provide certain uh, market needs, yes, uh, because or public needs actually, yeah, because they then they look at the space and say, well, you know, so and so will put you know X million dollars towards that. So it's why a sort of broader get... problem with age, isn't it? So, yeah, I guess it goes a lot deeper than that. It only hits me on the ICT side because that's yeah. what I do. Yeah, but so, I remember seeing in a country in West Africa that will remain nameless. A, a large four-wheel drive going by with e-government written on it. And you know that all the wrong incentives are there. Yeah. It's just the PDMs, it's the vehicles. It's yeah. Instead of actually, is anybody using it? Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a, exactly right. I think, you know, so the same problems that have undermined, you know, African development in the past, you know, based on the aid model, are just shown again in this ICT. Yeah, it's through a slightly different yeah. prism. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's right. And so it's a challenge that we have to deal with. And the problem is, it's not all. So I'm not against getting ICT in Africa, you know, further on. So 
Well, so a great example of this. This isn't an either or argument. Though. No, it's quite nuanced. Yeah, it's things. very. It's, it's multifaceted. Yeah. Right? So one of the one of the great projects that I love to bring up is everybody talks about the Royal PC. So let's talk about the Royal yeah. PC. One laptop per child. One laptop per child. Hundred dollar yeah. laptops. Get them yeah. out there. Done, done through the government usually. So I wasn't against the one laptop per child. Yes. I didn't necessarily agree with all the market. Mm. But I liked the idea of more kids having computers in their hands. I think that's mm. a good thing. Yeah, we need that to happen. Yeah, right. So if they're going to just give them away or do it through the government, fine, no yeah. problem. Now it didn't work out the way they expected, no problem, um, because it did spur on some growth in you know netbooks and it, it, it did spur yeah. some growth into that technology, in the which was sort of accidental. Way. Yeah, so it was, yeah. it was a tertiary thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what it also what also happened was I, I wrote about this ICT for D kind of condescension mm -hmm. space, if you will, a couple of months back, and right after that, the LPC tablet came out. Yeah, and Nico Ponte was quoted as saying, "It's going to be dropped out of the out of helicopters over villages." <laughs> and so you just look at this. <laughs> <laughs> that really, yeah. you had to say that. Yeah, right. Like that is. Is that really the best way to, to, yeah, to, to describe what you're going to do? To do? Yeah. And, and I mean, that's marketing for the West, is what it is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It sounds very cowboyish. Yeah. And that no, you're going to do it come hell or high water. Yeah. But here's the thing the guys who are getting into tech here are, yeah, the generally middle uh, to middle upper class yeah. young guys. Yeah. They have access to computers, they have them in school, they have yeah. them at home, they have their mobile phones, they have smartphones. There's, that's what's happening, that's who's getting into it. Um, and there is a middle class. And there is a middle class. Thing, it's a bit of a surprise. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. people, the other argument against the LPC was that, well, people need water and food works. Yes. Well, guess what? Yeah. Not all of Africa is starving and living in a village. Yes. Increasingly, we have more urban people, and guess what? They also have yeah. other needs. Yeah. And there's other, and so there's a, there's, but there's, there's a, it's a crazy, it's a crazy kind of either or, because the developing world will frequently yeah. say, um, I remember when internet 10 years ago was the big discussion. It was clearly not going to work, but nonetheless, yeah. people would say, um, radio is more important for Africa. We should put our money into radio, yeah. as if somehow the choice was between the horse and cart and the car. And so the developing community could make a decision on this. No, no, it's like the, there's, yeah. there's, there's this um, false dichotomy of, 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 of binary answers. Yes. Right? Where it has to be either yes or no. Yeah. Right? And so that's where, why. Where one answer is righteous and the other answer is right. unrighteous. And so actually, that's actually the other thing. It's like, it's it's not actually just a uh, practical yes. uh, explanation here. There's a very emotional one that goes on as well. Yes. Which is because people are affected deeply by the needs of others. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. Right? Um, so where people are coming from for this age space is generally not a bad thing as individuals. Yeah. But the effect that it has on, on the market, uh, generally just you know, broadly speaking, yeah. is can can be very negative. I think it's been overly negative over the past 50 or 60 years. It's a lot of position taking of a very particular kind. I remember the first mobile active in Cape Town. There was a guy who went around to each of the workshops, and his only contribution was um, actually, there's lots of illiterate people in Africa, and therefore SMS won't work. And that was all that he said over and over again. Right. And there was a grain of, more than a grain of truth right. in it, but somehow it didn't kind of get to grips with it. And it was about him being brighter than everybody else. Right. And it's just kind of crazy because actually that doesn't help the argument at all. That you have the worst of uh, yeah. both worlds. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you've got an enormous number of pilots in ICT and D. It seems to be not yeah. all flying. Yeah, so I think what happens when you when you look at um, the this kind of grant based funding space right, is that people are very willing to fit, to fund pilots. I'd say the same way that many you know VCs and, and, and seed funders outside of Africa are willing to see and fund startups for three to four to six months. Yeah, you know, accelerator models, right? Yeah. Um, we don't have the accelerator model here for the for profit side very much. We're getting it, so actually that's coming in, in yeah. a big way right now, but we haven't had any struggle, yeah. right? So what's happened is people build these pilots and they just say, you know, okay, let's go see if it'll work. But there's no repercussions if it doesn't, or if it does. Well, there's no easy way of judging if it has worked. Right. Yeah, because sometimes the... And so you have a pilot that goes for two years right. or three years, and then they just extend the pilot. So. Yeah. It just well, kind of keeps wandering forward. One of the you know one of the few pilots we've seen that has worked was was Tesla. That came yes. actually from a grant based yes thing right. Yes. Both. I remember the history right. very well. Yeah. So came out of Diffie giving yes. Vodafone some money. Right. And it was the single best piece of grant aid in development, I suspect, right. in the post war period. Yeah, more or less. So really, so you think it's, I, I was I would frame that in the, yeah. in the tech space for sure. But you get yeah. it all. 
I, I would get into an argument with people. Really? Yeah, that's, a, okay, that's yeah. interesting. I don't know enough about all of the projects they've yeah. done to say, but I think it's actually a really fantastic uh, example because, but but why it worked was because it was it was partnered with a with a hungry commercial entity. Yes, and it took a, it took a fair yeah. amount of time to work. As yes, well. yeah. Yeah. and I think I think that the people who are looking at this as a binary, yeah, they don't often they, they often think it, it, that if you enter into it with the with the commercial side, it somehow sullies it or dirties it. Yes, and that's just simply not true. But you have to have a balance sometimes, and, and it's okay. Again, there's not not all grant money is bad money. Not all, C, yeah. not all ICT for D money is bad money. Yes. Right. The same way, not all commercial oper opportunities yeah. are bad deals. Yes. Yeah. Right. So you have to you have to have some type of balance there. You have to realize it's more balance. But I think what makes it so confusing is that if government was genuinely being government, then you would know what the public need was. Right. Whereas actually, what is happening half the time here is that actually external money is substituting for the public need. And the public need is always generally expressed, rather than a set of people buying up saying we want this. Well, in a sense of that, I mean, because the because it's always external money. So in, yeah. in, in the UK, if you have to have some type of ICT for D activity, it actually yeah. comes from government funds. Absolutely. Right. Here it comes from yeah, external government, funds. government scheme to roll out in rural areas. Exactly. They're not getting that money yeah. from anybody else. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's actually they get small amounts from the private sector and sponsorship, but in sure. the Right. But they're not getting it from the World Bank. No. You know, yeah. Traditionally. Yeah. So you know, here though, it, it is. It's coming yeah. from an external actor, which then sets up a very paternalistic type of uh, of, of relationship between yes. the, the giver and the receiver. And well, it's more complicated than that because people like the World Bank, in the main, have relationships with government. Right. And therefore, you're back into the same kind of set of dead ends. If the government is hopeless, if they're not doing their job, then right. actually you're stuck in that. So if you're not, so um, when, I, when I talk to the different agents, my my actual what I say to them mm. is get behind the policy stuff, yeah, get behind the infrastructure stuff, yeah, and that's where you can do the most good. Yes, right? get in there and incentivize governments to do their job. Yeah, get in there and help subsidize infrastructure if you're going to subsidize anything. Yeah, you know. If, if, you know, if it's laying more fiber on cable, yeah. whether it's undersea or otherwise, whether it's helping with policies and, and formulation of them around, you know, enterprise on the technology scene, yeah. whatever it is, that's what you can really help. Yeah. And so get involved there. Yeah. It's hard. Right? But you because I think the I think the difficult thing is once the elements come into place. I mean, Kenya, where we're sitting at home, you know, many of the elements that you're talking about are in place. Right. You know, just fairly competitive. Um, there's lots of fiber on and on you go down the list. The, what, what isn't always in place is the critical mass of users. And the critical mass of users don't first say to themselves, I need an app that deals with, no. or I need a service, an SMS service that deals with. Right. You know, pregnant women don't sit down and say, actually, what I need is something to remind me to go and see the nurse. That comes afterwards. And so, unless you have this critical mass, we're using commercial services like Investor. Then actually everybody else can't join the party. Right. You know, World Bank money can't substitute for the market. Yeah, you're absolutely, so, you're absolutely right, and I think it's a problem both on the entrepreneur side, to be honest, yeah. as well as the you know the ICT side or the government side. Yeah. Not everybody is building something for the user.